Meaningful Ideas Trading Club, brought to you by hkklawoffices.com. As you guys know, we put this on to talk about uh, meaningful things, personal development and business development. Um, it's a place to come in and share ideas and what's working for you and what's not working and what we can do to make it better. What's going so, on, Kyle? Hey, thank you for having me on today. I appreciate it. Hey, guys. Glad to be here. Mike, I appreciate you sharing your story. This, uh, However, you know, I could honestly say today, though, I wouldn't change it. be joined today by uh, a number of uh, people. Um, they'll be coming into the room. We always start by uh, giving some gratitude right off the bat here. I'm happy today um, that I'm here. I'm happy that um, you know I was able to put my two feet on the ground uh, when I woke up. I'm healthy. I'm happy. My family's healthy. Business is going well. I don't have a whole lot to complain about. And uh, I think it's really cool that you guys all join this weekly so we can talk about these uh, these cool things. The two questions that I wanted to focus on today, and I'll do a little intro and then we'll get into some storytelling and Justin can talk to us about his business and what he's looking for from us. Question number one is, I'll put it in the chat here. These are questions for you to think about. What do you want? Okay, that's number one. What do you want? What do you want in your life? What do you want in your business? Okay, second question is why? Why do you want that thing? Okay, whatever it is, a loving marriage, you want the respect to your kids, you want lots of money, fancy cars, you want a thriving business, you want a house on the ocean, you want to travel the world, you want to be a rock star, what about a celebrity, you want to be an author, you want to be a filmmaker, what is it that you want, okay, get clear on that first, second question is why do you want it, you know, what drives you, why do you want those things, whatever it is. And I just ask those questions because I think it's important if we do kind of a comparison of uh, two people, one who was clear on that and the other who wasn't, okay? So Elvis Presley, everyone knows Elvis, right? Put your hands up. Singer, actor, uh, king of rock and roll, right? He's an icon. I mean, he did a lot of things to transform uh, music industry, uh, movie industry, um, but um, Elvis had this thing. He had this ritual to get him to go to sleep every night. And this is, this, this is, this tells you how much pain he was in. He would, he would ask his assistants to give him three hits a night. Okay. The first one was this like cocktail of drugs that they would, they would give him. Uh, and he'd take all these pills himself. Um, he'd take some shots of Demerol and that would get him into this kind of like lucid state. And then he would just like eat. Apparently he would eat just like a ton, right? Now I'm, I'm getting this from stories that were told of his assistants, of course, after he died. He'd eat like three cheeseburgers. He would eat like six or seven banana splits and basically would like sleep him or eat himself to sleep. Apparently the assistants would have to sometimes dislodge the food from his windpipe so he could actually breathe and go to sleep. Uh, so he'd fall asleep. He'd go to sleep for about four hours and he'd kind of like beg for a second hit almost. He couldn't even give it himself barely. His assistants would have to pop the pills in, pour the water in his mouth, make sure he wouldn't choke. And then he'd get a third hit about four hours after that. But he wasn't happy, right? And the night that he died, he actually took those three hits all at once. Okay, he did all those three things, all those pills, drugs, food, everything. And he was just done, wiped out. Robin Williams is a guy like that. Made all of us laugh, right? Lots of movies, put smiles on our faces yet at the same time, wasn't happy. And, you know, they, those, those guys had really four things in common, okay? Um, I'm taking this from, from Tony Robbins now. Tony Robbins said, number one, they didn't know what they wanted, and they distracted themselves with all these other things because they couldn't get clear on that, okay? Number two, they developed these, he called them expressways to pain, where essentially they take these distractions and they would just like high speed get themselves into a point where they were either in pain or pleasure. And they were just going back and forth between the two. Number three, they didn't know how to make themselves happy without these things, drugs, alcohol, smoking, eating, and they never focused their minds. Okay. And that was a fourth thing, probably the biggest thing going back to number one, focusing your mind on what you actually want. Let's compare that to somebody who knew exactly what he wanted. Um, one person that jumps out to me is Michael Jordan. Okay. You guys might know I've been a Chicago Bulls fan for years, a long time. 
He knew exactly what he wanted. He knew why. He had clarity on that and made him very happy, okay? And he was very driven. When he didn't get the results he wanted, he changed. He adapted. He added new things to get the results that he was looking for. Uh, Michael Jordan ended up with six NBA championships, right? He basically took a brand, a shoe brand, Nike, and he's made Nike into this like huge thing, right? He, the Chicago Bulls are one of the best recognized franchises in sports. They haven't really won in years, but Jordan put them on the map and they're known worldwide. Hey, uh, Kyle, this is Jubin. Just one of the things that sometimes doesn't come out with respect to Jordan and his habits is how much he relied upon people who were professionally trained to do what he needed to become better at. Um, so for example, Jordan was not an expert on training his body to be athletically ready, but he knew how to find the people that could help him do that. So Justin, you are, you wanted to kind of get into this and get critical about our businesses, um, our being anyone on this call, right? Um, so I want to know from you, you and your wife, you know, I've had you on here before. You kind of talked about the history and the story of why you got this mini golf course started here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. My question for you is, you know, on those, you know, questions that I kind of posed at the beginning, like, what do you want and why? I wanted something different. And um, I wanted something to be a part of the community that I could kind of give back and um, also have fun doing. You know, I never, you know, when you think of mini golf and when I finally wrap my head around the fact like, okay, I could do something where I can meet a lot of people, um, make a difference in people's lives and give back to my community. That whole why I have the business evolved uh, to be a little bit more personal for Christy and I. This is your off season. Let's get, let's talk about what do you, what do you want? Yeah. What would you like to hear from us? Sure. Yeah, so this year, um, you know, every year after the off season, Christy and I go down to the golf course. We kind of try to reevaluate some things. We put a lot of investment into the, just the clubhouse itself, um, uh, just physically to it, made it, you know, clean it up, put new trim, new new countertops, that whole deal. But now we're to the point where, okay, we did that. Yeah, just kind of looking for advice to see like what do you guys think of our social media platforms our website, we are revamping our website. We know that's something we're gonna have to do. Um, and really some suggest, suggest, suggestions on where to go to do that. Um, because the one thing that I would really, really like to have is like a one-stop shop where I can say, hey, I need this tweak to my logo or I need new shirts developed or I need a new video to post on Instagram. You know, because I'm not that guy. Right. And I just need to, that's what I need help with. I don't know. I've, I've found going to several different people kind of gets the best, best bang for your buck. So, so when I need some logo work, I have one place I go to for a logo when I need, um, you know, when I need a video done, I have another person that I connected with or I just connected with last week for that. So I think it's good to have, I mean, at least, at least my business, it's good to have a few different people in your, in your toolbox. So, you know, you, you find one person who does something really well, maybe I'm doing it wrong just because that's how I'm good. It doesn't mean I'm doing this right, but uh, having someone I know that I can, I can go to for, for different aspects of my business, as opposed to a one-stop shop, I think has done well for me so far. Yeah, I totally agree with you on uh, multiple stops for getting things done, because I, I think that people who claim that they can do a lot of things well typically are not as good as people who claim that they can do one thing well has anybody has anybody heard any negative things about my golf course that they would want to share and again I, I'm, I'm the type of guy i can take it so i i haven't heard anything negative here's here's what my thought is one of the goals that i have as a law firm is this and, and the backdrop for this is like look like the kohler company people that are familiar with our area know that the Kohler company started by making toilets and high-end showers. And they basically, like, they own that, right? And, like, they're the best. And they're in Kohler, Wisconsin, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, right? They didn't stop then. Now they have, like, the best golf courses. We just had the Ryder Cup. I mean, it's actually, when you think about that, 
they've not only did it once, they've done it now twice, okay? And we have other companies in our area like that. I, I talk about it a lot. Johnsonville Foods, right? A single butcher shop that's now an international brand. My point of that is there is nothing holding your mini golf course from being the premier mini golf course. And it's really a matter of how much, in my mind, you want it to look and feel for people. Now, all those other things that you're talking about around content creation and stuff like that, I mean, that's really just engagement on those platforms, which will drive people to your website to learn more. But that's a, con <laughs> that's a constant effort that's going to be on you all the time, right? Sure. You're going to get exhausted with that. So my recommendation is if you're going through the exercise of revamping your website, make sure that that foundation is solid, right? You know, maybe instead of, you know, focusing a ton on content for Instagram, you know, focus on content for a blog because that blog is going to drive your search engine optimization way better than like, you know, Instagram reels, Google AdWord campaign, do Google display ad campaign, you know, have all that stuff set up so that you're targeting people, right? Because you can serve people ads through a targeted campaign so that they're seeing, you know, they're going to click on that little ad and they're going to go to your website, you know, but then you got to think about what kind of journey do you want to give these individuals once they're on your website, right? If you want to talk social media, it's kind of up my alley. <laughs> okay. So I was just kind of flipping through your Instagram. I was writing down notes of some different ideas I was looking at. So I, I wrote down events, like, and that's the first thing that came to my mind is you got to get some events going. Like you don't have to be, you know, start your own tournament, you know, and do something like on the 4th of July. Um, and then you need to do some collaboration with other stuff like Visit Sheboygan or Blue Harbor or, you know, the, the ice cream place. I see you have some of their stuff on there. Um, the Instagram stuff though, you got to remember a lot of the kids that are going to come, you know, like the 20 year olds and 30 year olds, they're going to find you through Instagram. And they're going to be on there. You know, I post stuff on Facebook, but I don't get a lot of stuff off of Facebook. It's pretty much Instagram is where my business come from. But I tell anybody that asks me about how to grow their page is you need to find another page that you like that is doing the same, like doing mini golf, you know, and make it, you know, find it like in Florida or California and see what they're talking about and see what they're writing about and copy them in a way, you know, look at their posts, generate your own ideas based off of what they're doing. Look at their videos and then kind of, you know, you, it'll get you creatively like kind of going in that direction. Um, you don't use a lot of hashtags. You need to be using hashtags or people won't find you on Instagram. Yeah, no, that's great. I appreciate all the feedback. That's, that's great. Filling up a whole page here of notes. So. That's yeah, <laughs> dude, I love it. Really good stuff. Okay, guys, I got to close the room. Thanks for being here. Eunice, I want to just close with your thoughts. Uh, you said you want to help people find purpose and meaning in their life. Why? Because it's aligned with my purpose in life and it'll make me feel fulfilled and happy. All right, guys, go after it. Go get it. Thanks for being here. Super grateful to have you all. We'll come back next week. Hopefully it was helpful. Good value today, guys. Thanks for the contributions. Uh, go out and get it. We'll see you later. Meaningful Trading Ideas Club.